Modern cloud applications are not generally built with traditional resources like virtual machines, and they generally involve three or four different kinds of modern PaaS services. So to properly monitor and manage them, we need to take a step back and look at the big picture. I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. Azure and its native monitoring services are designed to look at things as vertical technology silos, like virtual machines or storage. And it can be difficult to visualize and manage the connections between all of those resources into a single connected application solution. And that's where the sponsor of this video comes in. Serverless 360 is a platform that will manage and monitor your Azure PaaS resources and applications in real time so you can drive down the total cost of ownership, follow good DevOps practices, manage and monitor your PaaS and SaaS applications and help everything run more securely. And one of the most helpful features that I found in Serverless 360 as I did this review is how it can help you to connect your different resources together into full-blown modern applications. So you can see the application flow and monitor each step of the process. To get started, you need a PaaS application, like this one. I've got a simple app here that's going to help my customers get rides from the airport, kind of like an Uber or Lyft. And we of course have multiple different resource types here, and just monitoring any one of them isn't going to give us the whole story. So let's get things set up. Over in Azure Active Directory, on the left, we want to go to our applications. And we're going to create a new one here, and it's going to function for us as a service principle. And we're going to use that to grant Serverless 360 some rights within Azure. Go ahead and click the new registration at the top and give it a name. I'll call mine Booking Management. Then click the register button at the bottom. Now we need to add some API permissions to give rights to Serverless. So go ahead and click here to add your permissions. Now over here in the Microsoft graph, you want to go to application permissions and scroll down to the directory section. And in there you want to grant the read permission. Now you should see two permissions have been actually granted here. If not, then you want to go back and add another permission for delegated users so that they can read as well. Once you have both permissions, go ahead and click to grant admin consent. And now we need to connect to this new Azure Active Directory application to Serverless 360. So on the left, go to Authentication, and we're going to add a platform, and then over here, select Web. Go ahead and paste in this URI to apps.serverless360.com forward slash login. And at the bottom, be sure to select the Access Token and ID Token boxes as well, and then click Configure. And back over on the left, go to your Certificates and Secrets. We now need to generate a secret, which is our password that Serverless is going to use to access our environment. Go ahead and give your secret a name over here and select your duration. Six months is just fine with me, but pick whatever works in your environment. And we've got our secret here at the bottom. Now, very important, you need to save the secret value and the ID to somewhere like Notepad, because once you click away from here, you won't be able to retrieve this secret again. And we're going to need it in just a minute. That's it for the Azure Active Directory side of things. Now we need to grant this service principle permissions on our subscriptions resources that are related to this application. So find your resource group where your app is located, and click on Access Control in the blade on the left, and then at the top, click Add, and add a new role assignment. For the role, you want to select Contributor over here, and then click Next. As for your members, click the Select Members button, and then type in the name of the application, which for me is Booking Management. Add that, and then click the Review and Assign button at the bottom, and we are good to go. Now we can go to serverless360.com and notice that there is a free trial button up in the top corner. And this free trial is for 14 days and I'm gonna have a special offer for you at the end. So stick with me here. And in our free trial, I'm gonna click to sign in with Azure Active Directory. And then we need to fill out our form with our organization name, contact number, email address, and then the UPN for the user who'll be your Serverless 360 administrator. And the rest of these, you're probably going to need a little bit of help on. So we have our Azure AD ID, and for that, we can go back to Azure Active Directory, go to Users, find your particular user, and then over there in the middle, you've got the Object ID. Go ahead and copy that and paste that back in your form. 
Now enter the name of your Azure Active Directory tenant, and then you'll want to go back to Azure AD and grab your tenant ID and paste that in as well. Now we need that secret that we created earlier. So paste that in that box right there, and then we need the secrets application ID. And that's back in our booking management app and click the application ID right there, paste it back in your form. Now you're ready to click the start free trial. And here is the main dashboard of Surlist 360. Notice that there are three main areas, business applications, where we'll onboard our Azure resources and build our application service map, business activity monitoring, where you can set up all of your parameters to monitor across your applications, and then the Azure Documenter, which will have all the information about your resources, including cost analysis data, so that you can make some better choices going forward. So let's start with the business application section. First, we need to give our application a name and a description, and then click Next. Provide a friendly name, as well as your Azure subscription ID and tenant ID. Finally, the secret that we had created earlier and the secrets ID as well. Then you can click Validate. That should just take a minute. Once that's complete, click Next. Serverless 360 will now use that service principles permissions on the resources that you already gave it to discover all of the stuff in there so that we can build our app. And you'll just wanna click through the list here and select all of the particular resources related to this specific application. And once you're ready, go ahead and click Next. Now this is the monitoring rules of the application and a lot of this has been pre-selected for you based on several best practices. Now, if you wanna customize any of these things, go ahead and click the Configure Monitor Rules radio button at the top, make whatever changes you feel are necessary. And when you're ready, click Next. Here's where you'll determine your alert frequency and who will be receiving those alerts. If it all looks good to you, click Next. And then here's a summary of everything that you've selected. And when you're ready, click the Create Business Application button at the bottom. So now you've got your first application. Let's have a look around. Here on the overview screen, you can see a high level view of your application and all of its resources and any errors or warnings. Over on the left, you have a tree view, and if you open that up, you'll find under there all of the resources that you selected earlier. And you can see all of their health states here, as well as whatever resource group and subscription they're located in. On the left, go ahead and click on the application's name. And now we've got the main business application section, starting with this overview screen. And this is the drill down view of the screen that we saw earlier. You can also create your own dashboards, which we'll come back to in a minute and then click on the application service map. Then click the button so we can build one. Now this is a kind of drag and drop interface, so pull from your components on the left here. When you click on them, they'll end up in the main field and then you can drag them around to where you want. Once you get all of the particular resources needed onto the screen, drag them into their proper positions and then you can connect them together. And once you're all done with those connections, you've got something that looked kind of like this. And now this is your application flow. So your users come in at the web entry point, the data is passed to a logic app, then over to the service bus and the functions, and then from there to the database. If it all looks good to you, go ahead and give it a name over there on the top left, and then click the save button on the top right. Now that you've got your application all set up, let's create a dashboard. Now I'm not gonna show you the entire dashboarding process, but I'll just give you an idea of how it's done. So go ahead and click the dashboard button, then click to create a new dashboard. Give your dashboard a name over on the top left, and then over on the top right, go ahead and add a widget. Give your widget a name, and then pick the chart type that you want to use, and then the resource type. After that, select the specific resource that you wanna monitor and which metric you wanna monitor. Then hit the Add Widget button at the bottom. Then when you're done, go ahead and hit the Save button. Now, notice here that our dead letter count is actually zero because we haven't run anything through this application yet, but that's the basics of how you would set up a dashboard. And it's sort of reminiscent of how you would do this in Azure as well. And here's what it looks like once you've onboarded all of your applications. You've got all your service maps all set up and your monitoring in place. Now click over here, we'll check out the booking management app, and then we'll click over to dashboards. And here's what a completed dashboard looks like and the associated service map as well. Now notice that there are some other things that you can add like automated tasks. And we've got a couple examples here of how you could resubmit messages to your Logic app and you can set your retry count as well as set up some additional triggers and run actions. 
Finally, at the top, we have our monitoring tab, and this is where you can see every detail of what's happened through your application flow at every level of every component. And because you know your application best, you've pre-configured everything so that when support, who is not as familiar with your app as you are, sees all of the different error messages, they're not going to get false positives, they're just getting the things that are really important that they need to look at. Let's switch gears and talk about business activity monitoring. Now there's five major components to the BAM process, and those are end-to-end -end tracking, search, reprocessing, monitoring, and analysis. Now your first choice in setting up BAM is if you're going to use Serverless 360 or your own Azure infrastructure. And the real difference here between the two is the volume of the data being processed. So for this example, I'll just use Serverless 360 and then click Next. Now we need to tell our database firewall to allow the connection from Serverless 360. So let's go back to the Azure portal and let's go to our SQL Server. And on the top right, you can see here that you can go to the firewall. When you click that in the middle of the screen over there, it says allow Azure services and resources to access this server. Change the toggle there to yes. Then click save at the top. Now we need to have our Azure SQL Server connection string so that Serverless 360 knows which database to communicate with. So back in Azure, this time go to your database and on the left, you wanna click on your connection strings. At the top here, go ahead and copy the whole connection string and then go back to Serverless 360 and paste it into the top box. And similarly, we need a connection string for our storage account. So back in Azure, open your storage account and on the left, go to your access keys. And then at the top, you're gonna to need to click to show the keys and then pick whichever connection string you want to use click the copy button and go back to serverless 360. Paste into the bottom box and now at the bottom of the screen, click the validate button. And in just a minute, you should see two green check marks. If so, click next. Now it'll take a minute or two to spin up the resources and while you wait, there's this video right here that you can watch that'll tell you more about the BAM process. But we'll just skip ahead for now and you can watch that on your own later. Once it's done, you'll want to click here to see a sample business process, and this will kind of help you get started. Over on the left, you want to click on the cab booking process. This is the name of the sample application. And under that, you'll see a tree with several different options. So first, let's go to tracking. This is where you can get the overview of what's going on in your application, and notice that we do have a sample failure. So let's click on that. And let me get out of the way, and you can see here on the right side that you have the transaction flow, and we've got a red box down in the bottom right. This shows where your failure is. So right away, Serverless 360 has taken all of the guesswork of troubleshooting out of the picture and shown us right where the problem is. Now, once you have your environment set up, you'll be able to click that reprocessing button at the top and then make those things go back through the system and work properly. You can click on the failed stage and let the user see the failure reason followed by the reprocessing. Back on the left, let's click on the dashboards and as you can see, we processed two transactions. One was successful and the other was our failure. Under the transactions on the left is where you'd go to build the logical process flow that we looked at just a moment ago. And then under monitoring, you can see the particular alerts that you have, as well as set up any frequency, as well as your recipients. And there is a whole lot more that you can dig into here, but most of that's gonna depend on your specific application. So for now, let's go back to the home screen and dig into the last section, which is the Azure Documenter. Now, one of the coolest things about having this built right into Serverless 360 is that now it will document your application for you. And that means understanding the total cost of ownership of each transaction, as well as the overall application. So let's get started. First, give your document here a name and put it in the description if you like, and then click next. Now we need to set up our service principle like we did for our business application. So give it a friendly name and then drop in your subscription and tenant ID, as well as the application ID of your service principal back in Azure Active Directory and your secret. Then at the bottom, click validate. Once you see the green check mark over here, 
Click Next. Now your documentation can be stored as a PDF directly in Serverless 360, or you can save it to an Azure storage account. And you have another option here to use something called Document 360. This is an online management platform. Now since this lab is just little old me, I'll go with the PDF version in this example. Click Next and then set the range that you want to cover, and I'll just take the last seven days and then click the Generate button at the bottom. Now this could take a few minutes depending on how much data you already have, but when you're done, you can either download it here or click the blob link and then share that with others. And when you're done here, you can just hit Close. Now we've seen the full documentation screen and I've just got the one example. So I can click the Download button right over there and take a look at it. And you can see that there is a ton of information here. So I'll just give you some highlights. And I could best do that by flipping over to a sample doc that I have. So you can see some pretty cool graphs and charts that are showing the breakdown of your expenses by resource type, as well as some charts related to the response time of your individual resources, as well as several tables related to the cost versus consumption index. The nice part about this is anything that is showing up as a low consumption means that your resources aren't being used very much. Now that gives you an opportunity to change the scale of the resources that you're using. You could actually shrink them and save some extra cost because you're just not consuming very much of those resources. On the flip side, if you're showing high usage, then you may need to scale up so that you have more processing power in your application. So that's the overview of the three major sections here, and I've got some final thoughts for you, as well as the special offer that I talked about earlier. Now, this is actually one of the best services that I've seen for application management and monitoring in quite a long time. And I think that the business value of what I've already shown you kind of speaks for itself. But just to give you one more incentive to try Serverless 360 for yourself, They've agreed to allow you, the Azure Academy learners, to extend your free trials past 14 days so you can take a real good look at their product at no cost. To do this, you want to click on the settings gear on the top right, and over on the left, click on license consumption. Then select where it says to increase your current license limits, click here. And in the comments field, all you have to do is type in, please extend my Azure Academy free trial. Click the send request button and you're good to go. And if you've got a modern cloud-based application, you'll definitely want to check out Serverless 360 to manage and monitor those apps at every level. I don't think you can go wrong here. And if you like this review, please do give me a thumbs up. That helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. And give me some comments down below on what other product or service you'd like me to review, and I'll see what I can do. And to see some of the other stuff that I've reviewed, go ahead and click on that video link right over there, and I'll see you soon. Happy learning.